Hi everyone and welcome back to the garden. I'm a bit tired today but I'm talking about an exciting plant and that's this Tetrapanax or the T-Rex plant and I'm actually giving this exact one away. You might have seen my competition video and by the time you watch this it will have closed and will be drawing a winner later this week but I wanted to put a video together for those of you who just bought one of these recently how best to plant them, how to choose the right spot for them and the best care to give them to get the biggest plant possible in the shortest amount of time. So why Tetrapanax such an amazing plant to put into your garden? Well firstly, and this is by far the most important reason, they look absolutely awesome when they get bigger. When they size up, when they've got leaves over a metre wide, they look absolutely incredible. And I can guarantee if you have one of those in your garden, when it gets to a decent size, it'll be the number one plant that people ask and want to know what it is. So whether you've got a full on jungle garden, or maybe you just like to have a few sort of tropical plants here and there, a Tetrapanax will certainly be a great contender for the showpiece in your garden. The second reason is the growth rate, and tetrapanax do size up really quickly. So it's hard to put a plant around this size, by the end of its first year it'll have a trunk around a foot tall and that'll start to become woody. And it'll already put out some fairly big leaves later on this summer when we eventually have one. Then next year, again it'll put on another foot or so of trunk and it'll put out even bigger leaves. And in one sense they look even more impressive as a smaller plant when they have these just colossal leaves that look completely out of proportion. But that plant will keep growing up and up and within five to ten years it'll start to develop quite a thick woody trunk, something like that. So they're definitely not a plant like a slow growing tree that you put in and think in 20 years time that'll be a real centerpiece of the garden. This is a plant that you can put in now that will have real impact next year and continue to get better and better and you'll have a towering great big tetrapanax maybe four meters high in around say seven eight years time so to me that's definitely a good return on a small plant like this. And the third reason is just how easy they are to grow. So this won't be a really long care video like my one on Dixonia Antarctica tree ferns where there's lots of different watering and potential winter protection requirements. Tetrapanax are an easy plant to grow and once they do get a certain amount of size, they're very hardy as well. Certainly for anything we'd experience in a usual winter. So they're an easy plant to grow, they look really impressive and they grow quickly. Of course you want to add one to your garden. So firstly, let me tell you a bit more about the plant, how it grows and then I'll look into how best to care for it. But before I say too much about how your tetrapanax will grow and develop over the years, there is an elephant in the room that needs addressing, which is simply, is your tetrapanax a rex or not? And here in the garden, I grow a few different forms. I grow the standard tetrapanax papyrifa, I grow the rex form, which has got even bigger leaves that are quite deeply divided. It's a very striking plant and they're almost like giant claws. And then I also grow the steroidal giant form, which is even bigger still. But there are a couple of varieties that I don't grow here. I would get them if I had the chance, but at the minute, there's not many places that stock these. And to be honest with you, I'm very happy with the selection I've got. And personally, I've used them mainly at the back of borders. I'll show you my garden tour video, which will be coming up very soon. I know I keep promising that, but hopefully in the next couple of weeks. I've generally planted them at the back of borders. So the idea is that I'll grow up over time and form a sort of canopy, an exotic canopy over the tree ferns and all the other smaller exotics in front. If you want to know more about ID and your Tetrapanax plant, then I'll give you a link in the description below to the Tetrapanax Growers Group on Facebook. And they've got loads of helpful pictures and info on how to spot whether yours is a Rex or any other kind of variety. But the biggest clue for me that gives the Rex away is the deeply divided leaves. And even on this little baby here that I got from Melissa on Facebook, you can see they're really deeply divided. And the other visual clue is that usually these leaves are more of a silvery colour when they first come out, whereas the standard Tetrapanax, I keep saying standard, but it's still an amazing plant they're more of a sort of orangey brown color most tetrapanax for sale this year seem to vary from this one at the small end up to something like this and they did used to be quite readily available with around a foot or so a trunk and really started to develop a good woody base to it but this year, I think with a high demand, sellers are having to just ship them out a lot quicker and they don't have that growing time. But the crucial thing to check, if you can do this in person or maybe ask the seller if they're a private seller, is it well rooted in the pot? Because I know a few sellers have been selling them as very recent cuttings or as divisions with only a tiny bit of root on the pup. So it really is crucial to make sure it's well rooted because there's plants that don't have a massively high success ratio when it comes to actually transplanting those pups from the ground to a pot. And if you receive your plant around this size, I personally would keep it in a pot definitely until around May or June next year. So you can actually pot it up when it starts to get larger in this pot, pot it up to a slightly larger tub. You can maybe even go up to a 10 litre pot and that'll give it plenty of room to expand. And then you can keep it in a polytunnel, in a greenhouse, or even in a conservatory as a house plant over winter. And that's because a plant this size hasn't had time to develop that woody sort of stem yet. And it's that woody stem that gives it the hardiness. If you think about a hard frost, it can zap off any, any sort of soft new growth. And a plant 
like this is just soft new growth. So you need to make sure your plant gets to a certain size before you plant it out. And if the one you've got is around this size and it feels well rooted in the pot, then personally, I, I can see it either way really. You could either keep it potted up, but with it only being the start of July and there being a good three months of growing space left, I would get it out into the ground and there's a good chance that it will start to develop that good woody trunk before the cold comes in this year. Once your tetra planet starts to develop that woody stem or trunk, it's definitely a hardy plant. And even on the RHS website, it suggests a minimum temperature of between minus five and minus 10 degrees C. So that's definitely a fair amount of cold. And they're not a plant that needs protecting. In fact, the only trunk I've ever had that actually did suffer some damage is one that I wrapped in the first year of having it. And I think the rot actually built up inside it. So there's probably an important lesson there about not wrapping plants that don't need it, about wrapping plants too long, and about sometimes you should just leave a plant let it take the cold, let it do what it does, and it will slowly come back the next spring. So Tetrapanax, in most of the country, they're definitely gonna be a deciduous plant, and that's perfectly normal. Although they can keep growing in milder areas, so if you're in London or on the south coast, you might have a Tetrapanax that stays green all the way through the winter. Realistically, it's gonna be a deciduous plant for most of the UK, and those leaves will start to brown or blacken after the first frost. But come spring, come the first bit of real warmth, it will start growing again. There's definitely a few different ways your tetra palettes can develop over time and they're not like a trachycarpus palm tree that'll just go straight up with one trunk in a very sort of predictable growth pattern. Tetra panax can vary wildly and chances are if you're watching this video you've seen a picture of one in someone's garden and thought wow what's that and they're these plants that for the first few years they don't get massively tall but they do concentrate and grow in giant leaves so they look absolutely incredible in the middle of the border they do need plenty of space but they dwarf the other plants around them and at that stage I think they're absolutely fantastic and the leaves certainly fit in with a tropical theme but if that plant's happy that stem will become a trunk over time and that canopy will grow higher and higher and higher. And again, they look even more incredible at this point just for the presence they have in the garden. And it'll really make you feel like you're in a proper sort of jungle environment. But if that stem or trunk is affected by cold, you might find that you lose the main growing point and it causes it to branch off, which isn't a bad thing if it happens. It just changes how the specimen develops over time. And you might find it has its own sort of unique character, have different branches going off in different directions. But what I'm trying to say is you can't really control how your tetraplanus is gonna develop. Whether it's just a single stem beauty like that, or if it splits up and it has multiple canopies. Either way, if you leave it to it, they're incredible plants. But one other characteristic that you might have heard about is the suckering. And tetrapanax have the, well, well, certainly the potential to spread underground and have new pups that pop up around the mother plant. And if you leave these over time, they'll actually form quite a dense thicket of tetrapanax plants. And I don't know if you've been to Pan Global Plants, but there they've got an amazing specimen in the garden. It takes up quite a lot of space, but it's really incredible just seeing a huge stand of them and walking between them. So the main point I'm trying to get across is all tetrapanax are awesome plants and it doesn't really matter which variety you get, whether it's a standard papyrifer or one of the special varieties. They all grow up to be incredible plants and to be honest I've seen some plants in the original common form that just look so impressive in their own white with giant leaves and then I've seen some rex forms which look pretty similar. So it's not a case of like a gunnera where you get manicata and tinctoria and they're dramatically different. With the different tetrapanax forms I think they're all amazing plants and really it's something you want to plant in your garden and let it develop how it wants to develop. They're really incredible plant and definitely a good addition to any kind of jungle or exotic garden. When it comes to practical planting tips then, the first thing to do is to ensure you've got enough room for the plant. And I know some purists will say you need to allow two meters in each direction. In real world gardens, people don't do that. But I'll definitely give some thought to how the plants interact with those neighboring it. So if it's a big leaf plant, you don't want it near something spiky because all that's gonna happen is your tetra plant is gonna get ripped up every time it's windy. And likewise, if it's gonna grow up quite tall, just check what's above it. So you don't want to plant it under a low growing tree where branches are gonna get right in the way. So definitely give it a bit of thought, but personally, I like to prioritize the long-term vision for the garden rather than the sort of the next couple of years. So if I want my tetrapanax to grow big and form that canopy, I'm never gonna buy a plant that's four meters tall. Even if you could, that'd be ridiculously expensive this year. So I need to plant it in the spot where it's gonna to go to four meters and sort of allow for that long-term. So although they might be packed in at the minute, it will grow up and it will get 
the look that I want eventually one day anyway, hopefully. And when it comes to actually positioning your tetra panics in your garden, you'd be pleased to hear that tetra panics are very easy going or easy growing plants and they can tolerate most light conditions. So they can be perfectly fine in a sunny spot and grow very strongly. Equally, they'll tolerate partial shade very well as well. Now you could potentially put them in a full shade position. What you might find is that the leaves do get slightly bigger, but the plant overall might be more spindly and it might take a bit longer to actually get growing in spring. But an important factor, like with any large leaf plant, is shelter from the wind. And ideally you've got somewhere that's just got a tiny bit of shelter, so whether it's near your house or in front of a tree or definitely close to a fence, those strong winds will really rip the leaves up over time, especially if you've got a lot of the plants packed in that area. So definitely if you can prioritise one thing, it'll be a bit of shelter from the wind, but in terms of sun, it's perfectly happy pretty much anywhere you plant it. And when it comes to soil requirements or what they prefer, you'd be pleased to hear again that tetrapanax enjoy the same conditions that a lot of the big leaf tropical plants enjoy. So that's a good, rich, moist soil. So you definitely don't want to plant them in somewhere that's maybe sandy and very free draining. You might find they struggle to grow properly that way and they won't develop the big leaves that you really want them to. And likewise, if it's somewhere that's clay, that gets really waterlogged in winter, you might struggle, you might find out they're not quite as hard as you'd expect them to be. So the ideal sort of middle ground will be a good rich soil that's had lots of organic matter added over time either by yourself or just naturally or you can obviously add a lot of soil improver and you know various manures to it in winter to help bulk it up but you want the good rich soil and then you want to keep that feeding going through the summer months when it comes to watering and feeding then it's a case of more is better to a certain point and during the summer months when you're planting active growth any water that you give it when it's dry is really going to help it out so if it's a dry period like we've got potentially coming up every week or so give it a proper soaking and that really help it get its roots into the ground and push out even bigger leaves. And when it comes to feeding, arguably you don't need to feed them and if you've got a good rich soil, that's the perfect base for your plant to really get going. But if you want to top that up, then definitely it's the same old list of feeds. I'll list these in the description below that I recommend for a lot of these big leaf tropicals. So that's your liquid seaweed, your tomato feed, chicken manure pellets. They're all great for applying during the summer months to get even bigger growth in your tetrapanites and a lot quicker too. And when it comes to winter care, as I addressed in my earlier point, if you've got a really small plant then I'd be tempted to keep it potted until it's around 30 centimetre trunk, something like that, or at least it's got enough time in the growing season to put it in the ground and it's got a couple months to grow and really establish before the cold hits. I definitely wouldn't put out a very small plant after sort of say August, September time, because it will have enough time to really sort of build up before the winter months. But once they've got that woody trunk, then they are definitely a hardy plant and you don't need to protect them in winter. From what I understand, some farms seem to be more prone for throwing up these pups around the base of the main plant than others do. But in all honesty, I don't see it as a massive problem with tetrapanax and it's one of those things really, you sort of put up with it for how amazing the plants are. But it can be also be a side effect of cold damage. If that main growing point gets damaged, it can send a signal to the plant to send up pups around it. So you might have a plant that's well behaved for a few years and then it starts sending up a few. It can also be a sign of just maturity to get to a certain point and start doing it. Or this is something you can practically you know, help with and stop it doing. If you dig or disturb the soil around your tetrapanax, that can actually spur it on as you cut those roots to send up pups around it. So it's definitely a planting consideration, but something I know a lot of you won't follow because you want to plant your tetrapanax in the same sort of area, the same sort of bedding scheme as your summer plants, like your insetes, your canners and stuff like that. So chances are there's gonna be some digging around it, so you might get some pups popping up. But you might also think an alternative is to keep it in a pot. And whilst you certainly can keep a tetrapanax in a pot, they never grow as well as they do in the ground. So realistically, if you want this plant for the big leaves and the massive growth it's capable of, chances are you're definitely just gonna have to go with it and put it in the ground. But ideally, if you cannot dig around it, that gives it the best chance possible of staying at just one stem rather than trying to create a thicker of these amazing plants. Worst case, if you've got a tetrapanax that seems to like throwing up pups everywhere, you can always dig these up, pop them on, and then you've got plants to give away to friends, family, or even sell on eBay, Facebook Marketplace. At this year's prices, you can make quite a fortune too. So that's tetrapanax for you. And whichever form you've got, they're definitely a staple in any tropical, exotic, or jungle-themed garden. And I've actually planted quite a few here, probably somewhere between 10 and 15, and I've also got a few that I'm growing on to plant close to the house 
I really do love them and they're going to be one of my themes running through the garden. These giant leaves providing other shade the exotics below. So hopefully in around 5 to 10 years that's going to look absolutely amazing. But until then I'll enjoy the big leaves and just seeing them slowly size up. And when I say slowly, it's a lot quicker than you'd imagine. So they're a fantastic plant, they're very easy to look after. But if you want to go that extra mile, give them the extra water and the feed, will definitely respond and reward you with massive growth. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you've got any questions about the care of tetrapanets or anything that I missed, then just leave me a comment below. But thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.